familiar with our problem. Uh, I think that I am familiar with the fact that you are going to ignore this particular problem until it swims up and bites you on the ass. Oh, cap space is always that problem for the New York Giants. This is Tim, this is New York Giants Trade Talk, powered by Online Big Blue LLC. Want to talk about some free agents, three free agents the Giants should probably go after. Um, and these are guys that are not big name guys. These are guys that, uh, well, one of them is a semi big name guy, but they're, they're guys that are affordable free agents. We've always talked about, and we've always used the phrase operational cap space. And I find it funny though. Cause I remember, um, we, we've been saying operational cap space for three years and I can't take credit for the phrase because I heard it in Tampa, uh, in 2023. And it's always been bandied about, but I, I got a kick out of it a couple, uh, I guess it was a couple months back, or actually it was before the season, that Joe Shane mentioned oper- operational cap space in one of his press conferences. I thought that was wild. I thought that was great. But uh, we want to have a new phrase. We want to coin a new phrase here because I think the Giants, they get in so much trouble by trying to make these big splashes in free agency. They they try to do things that they think will put them on the page. But you know what you need to do? They've always said it before. You need to build through the draft and augment through the draft through free agency. So we're going to go with a new phrase, talent to contract value. And it's a very simple phrase. The talent should equal the value of the contract. Now, Tim, you're going to say, well, that's not that easy because of the fact there are certain players that you don't know what the contract value is exactly going to be because you don't know exactly what their play is. Yes and no. But you, there are certain players that you can look at, put a valued number on, and then you could take that number and equate it to their talent and how they will hopefully, and there's always a phrase, hopefully, perform with their team. So their contract value should equal their talent. I love Bobby Okereke. I've said this before, but if you look at his contract value towards his talent on any other team, he was over. He would have been overpaid to go to the giants. That's just the way it is. We paid about $5 million more than we needed to for Bobby Okereke. But you know what? Sometimes when you're a bad team and you're short on players and you need to bring in talent, you're going to pay a little bit more of the contract value than the players actually worth. Unless you were a bad team like the Giants were last year and the contract value equals the talent, even though the contract value may not equal what it would normally be for another NFL team. So that's kind of, that's the kind of the way we need to look at it. This and Right off the bat, you know, we've talked about this before. You need to fix the offensive line. The offensive line needs to be fixed. It needs to be arranged. It, ne- it needs to find some continuity. Now, you're going to have JMS as your center, good or bad, if you like him or you don't like him. I still think he's undersized. I think he's going to get pushed around on the bull rushers. I think he's, he's, he needs to gain some of that weight back that he lost from Minnesota. He needs to figure out how to use leverage. He needs to work a little bit on his footwork, and he needs to bulk up but you're going to keep his continuity and you're going to keep him. You're going to keep him in the lineup. Then you are going to have Andrew Thomas at one side, of course, at the left tackle. I am not giving up on Evan Neal. I am not moving. Excuse me. Andrew Thomas at the left tackle. I am not giving up on Evan Neal. I am going to sit there and say, Evan Neal can still be a more than serviceable right tackle. He ha- he's not an Eric flowers. He doesn't have an attitude and reference to putting in the work. He just, you know what? He just said something that he shouldn't have said. He had a cave on Thibodeau honesty moment and said something he shouldn't have said. And everyone ripped him for it. But like cave on Thibodeau saying that Saquon Barkley should have been paid first. Evan Neal wasn't wrong. Evan Neal said it. I could have 45 plays and three of them are bad. And you're going to focus on the, those three and not the other 42. So I think if you really think this guy is going to come in, you know, there was Carmine, Carmine's or Carmen's going to come in and be the offensive guru on the offensive line coach and fix Evan Neal. You're going to keep Evan Neal there and you're going to continue to build continuity. Now I feel that the, the guard positions have always been the issue. So you need to find a guard who is, has a contract value that can come in and start right away, but is not going to break the bank. And in my mind, you got to look at John Simpson who, who's been starting all year for the Ravens. He is a guy that was a fourth-round pick from the Raiders back in 2020 out of Clemson. He started every game at left guard for the Raiders in 2021. Basically, he really did help to make the playoffs. Then he, then he started the first two games of the season the next year, then only appeared in 11 contests before he was released in two, uh, which, uh, December 2010. He is no, he's a big guy. He's 6'4", 231 pounds. He's known for his strength. He's the kid, if you remember, put, did, um, 
what he did 34 reps of bench press reps over on the 2020 combine. You know, he kind of lost his confidence and the, and I think that's one of the biggest issues. And that's why he got waived by the Raiders and the Raiders were just a shit show of an organization under McDaniel. It's just the way it is, but he, he's kind of discovered that je ne sais quoi. He's, 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 he's figured it out with the Ravens. Is he the perfect solution? He played in a 1,118 snaps, which is 10th in the league. He gave up uh, 11 penalties, which is a lot. Uh, which is second in the league, but he only allowed one sack this season, which is 62nd. And people are going to say, well, Tim, he's also, that's because of Lamar Jackson. Yeah, it's because of Lamar Jackson, but he had continuity in the line that he played 1,118 snaps. He had 644 snaps pass blocking, another 470, uh, 474 run blocking. He is a guy that was only allowed 26 pressures and allowed four quarterback hits. And again, it is because of Lamar Jackson. Yes, his blocking skills are always going to be a little bit above his running skills, run blocking skills. And that's kind of a guy that we need. We need a guy whose skill set is going to have a little bit more value in reference to protecting, protecting the passer because that's what everyone says that the Giants' biggest issue is, is going to be protecting the passer. And I think that that value for the Giants is going to be higher than the value he is going to have with the Raiders. And I, I personally think he is a guy that can come in and you can plug him in immediately to one of the guards positions. He is coming off where he signed a one year, $1 million contract. So he's going to be looking for a little bit more of a payday. He's not a guy that you're going to sit there and look at and say, you know what? He, you know, he, he's, he's, he's one of these guys that we're going to have to overpay this money to get him. You're not going to have to overpay him the money. He's an under, he's an unrestricted free agent. Um, because like I said, he's, he is a former fourth round pick. So he is a guy though. And if you take a look at his value contract value to what he would be to the giants, I mean, there, there is, there is something, there is something there for John Simpson to come in. I personally think that if you bring him in, you could bring him in probably anywhere between, I would say like $7 million a year, which isn't going to kill the giants cap. Because if you look at the value, and again, like I said, if the giants can at least get $54 million in cap space, you bring in this guy around 7 million a year, you give him three years, 20 something, let's say 21 million or 24 million at that point in time, you're, you're keeping him well within the range of a starting guard, but you're not overpaying. And the value to the giants is going to be higher because of the fact that he is hopefully going to be able to do a plug and play and come in and start immediately on this team. And I, I personally, th I personally think he can, because if you go back to when he started with the Raiders uh, back in, what was it? When, when did I, when did he start with the Raiders? I forget when he already started with the Raiders, but if you go back and look at when he started with the Raiders in 2021, he, he had, like I said, he had a hundred, 1,112 snaps, only 10 penalties, which is seventh in the league for his position and only gave up three sacks. But again, his run blocking blocking Forte was a lot better as well also with going back to the Ravers, excuse me, the Raiders. So he's a guy that if you bring him in, he's going to show contract value and he is not going to break the bank at the same time. The other thing we need to look at is I personally think the Giants should switch to a three, four. I really do. I think if you're going to look at the way the Giants personnel is currently, I think you're going to need to find some additional linebackers. I think you're going to have to, I, th I personally would switch to a three, four, maybe a hybrid three, four, four, three, but that's with me. That's just me. And one of the people that I think that the Giants, again, would have value for would be someone like in the Kansas City Chiefs, Willie Gay. I loved Willie Gay Jr. coming out of college. I love him. He was the old Mississippi Bulldog. Uh, drafted in 2020. He was in the second round, 63rd selection, 6'2", 243 pounds. He is a guy that, you know what? He has slowly moved through the ranks and moved up in the ranks in reference to playing time with Kansas City. He's not a guy that came in immediately, started immediately, made all these plays, but he's a guy that has slowly moved up into the ranks of Kansas City. He slowly worked himself into the lineup. He's slowly making himself into a better player. He actually started 16 games this year. I played 16 games, only started eight. But he's a guy that, like I said, he, he, he'll he get you, you know, anywhere between. I think he can get you anywhere between 70 to 80 tackles. He had 88 tackles in 2022. Uh, he's going to be one of those guys that's going to be at the point of attack. He has 17 tackles for loss over his four year career. He is a guy that if you pair him with the likes of Bobby O'Karake and move McFadden to the outside, um, I think he could help patrol that area a little bit better. He he played a lot of, uh, excuse me, he played a right side linebacker, uh, in 2020, but he's been mainly in the middle linebacker position now for 
for Kansas City. He is a guy, like I said, he's a durable guy, except, of course, he missed, uh, he's missing, he missed the championship game with a neck injury. Uh, but he is a guy, like I said, he is a roamer. He is a guy that he is going to be okay in coverage. He's going to be, he's going to do well enough in coverage. He is going to be able to get after the ball carrier. He's going to focus on the point of attack. His run defense is really what sets him apart. He's a very stout defender against a run. He is a guy that, like I said, he is going to show his chops more against the run. But I do find it interesting that he had basically a divided snaps in reference to coverage and run defense. He had 71 snaps on the run defense and 60, uh, 288 snaps in uh, coverage. And he had another 66 pat rushing the passer. I don't need him to rush the passer. I don't need him to rush the passer. I need him to make the tackle at the point of attack, force some fumbles, help Bobby O'Karake, and help if they, if the Giants ever get some quality outside linebackers who can understand their assignments and understand how to maintain their edge and push the play and push the play back into the middle of the field. I need a guy that's going to make the play. He did miss eight tackles last year, but he is normally a sure handle tackler. He's normally a guy that if you watch, he has he ha- Willie Gay has the ability. And I think in some ways, I'm not saying that he is Antonio Pierce, but he's more Antonio Pierce like when Antonio Pierce came over uh, from Washington. He kind of he kind of reminds me of him that in that regards. Uh, and, and I kind of think that he would be another gentleman that you could bring in at a good contract, the talent value. Right now, he play. I think his contract value, uh, I think his entire contract value was five million last year. He's a guy that, like I said, he he's not a full time starter. If you look at where you can bring him in, you could probably bring him in anywhere between two and a half to four million dollars a year. You're giving him a raise over the uh, what did he make? Uh, he made him one point six million. You could double his salary almost. Bring him in. Let's say you give him. Let's say you give him four million. Give him four million over three. You give him twelve million. He is a guy that could probably be a plug and play starter. He's not going to be this this all pro right off the bat. You never know. But he's a guy that's contract value could equal his talent for the Giants, which would allow them to hopefully find the way in this roster and bring in talent, so they can maybe look at some higher price talent and kind of work from there. I mean, I'd love the Giants to go out and get Josh Allen the linebacker, but you know what? That's, he's going to probably look at 16, 18 million dollars a year. The last player that I was thinking about, I was thinking about him and I was thinking about him a little bit, but I don't, I don't know the value and reference to him leaving where he is now, but I would love to see the giants go out and get Gardner Minshew. I love the porn stash. That's what she said. I thought the porn stash would have been great coming over to the Giants. I mean, he had a he had a big year going to, when Anthony Richardson went down. He had a nice he had a I shouldn't say he had a big year. He had a nice year when he went down. He threw for over three thousand. I think he went did he throw for over three thousand yards, fifteen touchdowns, nine interceptions. He is not this guy that is going to be you know this all world quarterback. He is a good solid quarterback. He is a good backup. He's more than a spot starter. He is a guy that could come in and play. You know, play an entire season if you had to have him do that. And he is a guy that has value. Yeah, it was 3,305 yards, 15 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Uh, let's see, how many games did he start? He started, uh, he played in 17, started in 13. Like I said, it's a guy that's, he's got the starting chops going back to the years in Jacksonville. He's got the ability. He is, he is, is he, is he the best deep thro- ball threat? No. Is he guy with the best accuracy in the world? No, probably not. Uh, like I said, he averages anywhere. If you break down his seasons, he averages about 65 four to 66% average completion rate. Um, but he is a guy that does look down the field for the ball. He has an average completion rate or average yards per attempt of anywhere between 7.3 and 8.7, which is above league average. He is a guy that if you bring in, he can solidify your quarterback position. He's young enough to understand that he could have a potential starting role with the giants. He could fit more in the RPO system and doing more short passes and mid, mid to inter- intermediate passes as well. Um, I'm not scared that he's only 6'1", 225 pounds. I mean, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't frighten me at all. He's a guy with value. He's a guy with contract value. And he's a guy, if you take adjusted contract value to talent level, and you're the Giants, you can look at what he's going to bring to the league. He's Again, he's a guy, like I said, he's going to be a spot starter. He, he, you could probably get him under like a big, uh, Baker Mayfield type contract. You know, I mean, I think that, you know, if, if, if you want to play safe for the giants, you could, you could probably sell them on a five to $6 million a year deal. So if you give, let's say you get on the high end, you give them 12, over 12 over two, nothing wrong with that. 12 over two. 
And he's a guy that he's going to come in and is not going to embarrass you as a starter because he is a he's not he is a average level starting NFL quarterback. And the Colts showed you could win with them. And now, if he's looking for that opportunity to have a starting role, I don't. I mean, with Anthony Richardson coming back, it's going to be kind of difficult. He can easily be convinced by Joe Shane that hey, listen, Daniel Jones may not be back till midseason. You know what we have on the roster right now is 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 Danny is Danny is Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito's brother. Why not take a look at the talent to contract value and say, okay, here we go, six million high end, come in for two years, and there you go. So honestly, if you take a look at it, even if you look and like I said, these salaries wouldn't be based on just the salaries. There there would be adjusted money. There would be money that moved around. So you could bring in potentially three guys on the high end of $18 million on the high end. And that's not working with bonuses and everything now. So their, their contract value may not be equal to what it is against the cap. It'll probably be less, but these are guys to look at. These are guys that can come in and start. These are guys that can offer the value in reference to the money and still bring in talent and, and allow you to be competitive. Oh, we're going to have a live stream on Tuesday to talk about this a little bit more. And as always, this is Tim. This is your Giant Straight Talk. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell because you want to know why. That'd be awesome.